previous series or the previous lesson we talked about analog to digital in this and we say that the method to convert this analog to digital is using discrete sampling and quantization so a brief of this understanding is a continuous system like this right somewhere like this all right discrete sampling is taking one of this each of this in this this continuous point at at different and at, at, at the same <laughs> interval <laughs> what am I doing and then if you were to connect in terms of digital it may be looking somewhat like that alright it, it, it represents so this one is the discrete sampling alright and it may somewhat represent similar to the continuous um, signal that we have and we and this is called a discrete sampling and now the quantization is simply if this is this value it's maybe 5.2 if this is um, 6 if this is um, 6.2 if this is um, 4.5 right it just simply round up or round down so therefore if I round up round down this value I'll have somewhere over here this is the quantized quantized point and 6 is exactly at this point, never mind. 6.2, I'll round down to maybe this point over here. 4.5, I'll round up or round down. In this case, I round up. So my, my signal for the quantization is somewhat like that. As you can see, there is, there is a different, different way of doing. And quantization is a, is a, is a way that, although it's, in, it's more inaccurate than the descript sampling, but at least, um, to a certain extent, it saves a lot of data storage because you are actually rounding things up or down so that you, the pres because if you have 5, 6, 3, 4, 2, 1, you're going to contain a lot of information for discrete sampling. And this one, this information can actually um, take up a lot of space in, in, in the computer itself. Alright, this is just a short, short uh, introduction to that. In this video, instead of analog to digital, we'll talk about digital to analog. So in other words, I'll be giving you, instead of the continuous system, I'll, giving, I'll give you a few points over here. And you're gonna know how do you construct this point. And that's the meaning of, of, about, about that, digital to analog. Here I have uh, some systems that is analog, that goes through this controller and change to from analog to digital. And this digital will send to the plant to process. And the plant will output a certain digital signal out. I mean, a certain analog system out. All right, this analog system will be feed back into this system over here. All right, and um, this example is talking about software system. A right, software system is taking analog systems, analog input, and analog feedback to convert analog analog information to digital. And this digital will program the plant. This is for software. But if you're talking about um, realistic stuff, in fact, my understandings may be wrong all right, for, for the software part. All right? However, if you're talking about certain physical stuff, all right, then this, this thing over here, input is some digital input. All right? And then <coughs> the plant itself is somewhat like a, um, how do I say, analog output. Okay? And that um, there is a sensor over here that changes the analog system to a digital system that will feed back as a digital feedback. So in other words, this controller is somewhat like an actuator. So it converts digital to analog to actuate the plant. So when actuating the plant, there is a certain position in the analog. I mean uh, analog position I would say alright meaning real real world um, position hope this is pretty clear example if I have some other system over here if I press for a car system if I press the the, the so called the accelerator it will actually send a signal saying that okay I press so it sends to the controller the digital controller and this digital controller will change digital to analog such that it within within this controller is a motor, so the motor will turn and turn the plant, and the plant will output an analog system to the wheel, and this this wheel 
or the wheel or the position of the car itself will give information to the sensor that changes analog to digital all right and this one will send back to the controller to control the speed of the car and things like that so as we can see this one is dig digital to analog this is analog to digital and for digital to analog is simply this one all right is is what we have been talking saying that we will do digital to analog today all right i mean in this in this series of like lessons and therefore when we talk about analog to digital is um oh sorry sorry when i talk about digital to analog all right meaning i have a certain i have a, a, a few points all right this is a graph i have a few points over here this is given from the um digital system and i want to change it to analog all right and therefore how do i how do i do that because we know that digital systems are in fact by points only all right and then you can link and link them up together like like somewhat like this right but however um in order to do this curve right here right now all right what we need to do we simulate all right we simulate the the digital system so i'll just draw a graph like this right along this point so from here then i can know that okay this is my my graph and then i can i can convert to an analog all right because now we have an analog system digital system is simply these points all right simply are uh, simply these points over here all right but these points are not efficient all right these points are not efficient for some reason all right i don't know why but as as for now you just take note fact is totally not related to, to you in this course but anyway therefore we use zero order whole all right this one is simply somewhat like the the name maybe this point should be here la, all right then this 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 one is somewhat they, they call it this one um, nearest neighbor reconstruction the reconstruction meaning you're going to reconstruct the digital to analog i think this would be better explanation than that all right so this is the nearest neighbor um so-called reconstruction method but however it is um because this might not be very easy to implement for some reason all right in, this, in our course we don't say but now it's just shifting all right instead of this points over here i actually shift my intervals over here so all this point is, is, is over here i actually take understandings over here so i take a point starting from from that so instead of let's say we have a point over here or we have a digital digital point or instead of um, assuming that this point is in the middle I'm assuming that this point is at the first part and the next point is at the first first part of a certain signal so you can you can easily construct a thing instead of averaging that for this case I think it's somewhat accurate but however this is better for some reason so this in so by taking this point at this portion over here we call this the zero order hole all right we call this a zero order hole for as you can see the zero order hole signal is over here you're taking each of the the starting point <coughs> so in the whole full picture what i want to convey if have for example you have a analog system analog system is a continuous system that is shown over here you digitize it it become like this sample signal so you have one dot one dot one dot now this is called the a analog to digital system now if i want to convert which is in our the focus of this series is digital to analog then in our this case this means that we're taking each of this point all right then we are summing them up together like this so we're taking each of this point and then we do this and when I draw this up, what I will have is simply this graph over here. I should reconstructing the signal back. That is just a zero of order hole. And therefore, when you talk about this zero of order hole, in our case, the digital to analog system. All right, we are going to learn how to reconstruct this this curve. We are going to learn how to construct this curve right here. 
and we also keen in elec in ele electronics that we are also keen what is the area under this curve and the different and and in order to do that normally for a curve we can do differentiation and for area under the the curve we can use integration all right which differentiation and integration is is purely linked to PID controller in fact I also don't know what is PID controller but it, it, it means that this is this is proportional Propor proportional to the signal this is the integration of the signal and this is the differentiation of the signal the digital signal so this PID com converter or, or, or controller or whatever it gonna integrate and differentiate your signal and compare to the proportional signal to 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 get a certain error so that you will feedback to your system all right and therefore if you go back to this pitch Alright, or you, if you, or if you were to come to this pitch, this is exactly what I'm doing right now. This whole thing is in fact PID controller. Alright, which is often used in all of the system. Alright, this is the digital PID controller, and the feedback is somewhere over here, and then it feedbacks back. But if you want to differentiate and integrate a certain system, I don't know whether it should be integrate, but rather that if you want to differentiate, <laughs> differentiate the the digital system over here to an analog system all right then you're going to use a difference equation all right a difference equation the brief of why do we use difference difference equation instead of differentiation is this differentiation this for example this is a continuous system you can straight away differentiate if you have this equation all right maybe x x y square plus 2x something like that all right if you have the equation you can differentiate straight away However, however, you'll have a digital system which is just simply points. You don't even have any equation to describe this one. Then how? This is why we actually take each of this point, standard point, each of this point as a period. Okay, we call this t, 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 two t, three t, four t. So at this point, this there will be a certain function for this point. Alright, so I call this x 2t, the function in terms of 2t um, when, when time is equals to 2t. Alright, and we have another equation at, that, that can specify an x, the equation of x when it is at time t. Alright, so I'm taking this point and simply minus away this point. Alright, this is the difference you are finding the difference okay and if that I were to run my frequency very very fast all right very very fast one over um, frequency is equals to period this line is period right so if my frequency is super for them fast like maybe infinity all right one divided by infinity is equals to near zero or approaching zero which means that my interval over here is going to be very very small right so therefore the difference between them will be very very accurate and therefore we can then form our our curve like this you get what I mean therefore this equation that could describe this 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 thing that I've been describing taking the difference divided by its its interval t all right if this interval is very small then we can actually then we will get the true difference between these two these two points all right and this this method that we we have been suggesting is called Euler's difference method and in the next video we will talk about it if it don't happen that you don't understand this one it's actually okay it's because what I want to convey is that because the digital points are all these points I just want to find a method to connect them we want to find the curvature of this one and this curvature utilizes um, the concept of differentiation if you remember right for example differentiation is dy dt right is the y axis divided by the x axis in our case the y axis is the difference between these two points which is dy and dt is simply the period and 
this differentiation is taking the limit where t is going to zero when differentiation meaning the intervals between t is very so small that the difference between dy is so apparent that we can we can draw a line between them and say that this is the dif the, the exact point of the of the difference and then because this is just one point this is just interaction between two points then you differentiate across all of the points then you would have you can construct their differences like this and you can construct them and you can construct the curve already this is just the meaning of that i hope this is pretty much clear in the next video we will talk about euler's difference method